morning. We are finally on a train, which is odd to say because KL has an excellent public transport system, but yet we've been walking everywhere so far. It's funny because our tour guide the other day, TT, she was telling us that people here in KL don't walk for more than 15 minutes because they just want to avoid the heat. Whereas our shortest walk has been about 30 minutes and our longest one was probably an hour and 10 minutes. So we're clearly the tourists here, breaking all the rules. Uh, return tickets to our destination today cost us 20 ringgit, which is just under $6. After a couple of days just exploring the city, then it's going to be pretty exciting just to see something a little bit different. Just like that, we have arrived at Batu Caves. As you get out of the station, then what you come to is not the main entrance to the Temple Cave, which is the main one up all the steps, but there are definitely a couple of other Hindu temples that are on your way, as well as a lot of wild monkeys and some birds, which I think you can pay to get some photos with. But we're gonna move on to the main event. We're at the main entrance to Temple Cave, which is the main cave here at Batu Caves. The whole area known as Batu Caves is a Hindu shrine, and it is dedicated to the Hindu god of war, Murugan, and the gold statue that is completely cut off in this shot is a statue of Murugan. Well, the rock formations have existed for about 400 million years. This particular location has only really been used as a place of worship for the last 130. The other parts of the main event, besides the statue and the other temples around here, are the 272 steps to get up to the main temple cave. Let's get our Stairmaster on. very rarely but Nick and I have very different opinions on our experience here at Batu Caves. I'll share mine first because I'm actually being the negative Nancy which is not really me. Normally I'm super optimistic. I think that individually this cave and rock formation being so old and grand could be beautiful. I also love a good temple in the sense that Hindu temples are so colorful and I haven't seen that many of them. So I really appreciate seeing something new because I do think that the statues and carvings are beautiful, but I'm having a very difficult time, actually an impossible time overlooking all of the man-made 
elements that have been put into the caves and temples to make it possible for tourists to visit. There are metal frames, there are metal bars, there are wheelie bins, there's garbage, there's lampposts, spotlights, wires, you name it. And to me, it's making it very difficult to appreciate the natural beauty of the caves and the religious and cultural importance and significance of the Hindu temple. I feel like Definitely when I first came in, I was very awestruck by the actual cave formations myself. Like fundamentally, it's 400 million years in the making and let's face it, it's incredible. And I think, I guess from my perspective, I came into this thinking, we've made a lot of effort to come here. And no matter where you go, especially if there's something popular, then there's always gonna be a tourist element. And so I guess in my mind, I was willing to overlook that and try and see past it as much as I could so that I can get as much enjoyment out of this as possible. But I think um, Rachel's disappointment has rubbed off on me a little bit. And now I'm starting to see all the girders and lampposts and all of the unpolished aspects to this. So. Having got up a bit earlier than usual, having got a half hour train, having spent probably the best part about half an hour trying to compete with other tourists for the perfect Instagram shots, and then coming up what I assume is now probably about 300 stairs, because there's an additional staircase behind us. I don't know, I guess I was just hoping to keep the good vibes, but yeah, it's kind of lost on me now. I'm sorry that I brought you down. I didn't mean to. It's okay. You're completely entitled to your reaction to it. And to be honest with you, now that I see it, I, it's, it's all fair enough. It's just, I'm now having a hard time unseeing it. All the same though, if you are willing to look past all the man-made elements to this, and you're just wanting to appreciate some genuine natural beauty, then this has that in spade. This is a very unique site in the sense that, like, how many times can you say that you've been inside caves like this, which have such high vaulted ceilings and beautiful stalactites as well. And also, if you like monkeys, this is a great place to come as well. And I think you actually had a good perspective earlier before I brought you down. You said, babe, these caves are 400 million years old, and someone thought they were so beautiful that they decided to build gorgeous religious temples in them. Yep. and make it a shrine. So I do think you have to have that perspective. For me, the most beautiful part is the temples at the base as well as the actual staircase. So I don't know, I just found once we got to the top, it was underwhelming. But then again, I struggle to say that because as I said before, the actual rock formations are grand, but I just can't see past all of the man-made structures. And that's my fault. It's okay. Everybody sees things differently and that's all good. But I think um, for anybody who's thinking of visiting here, then if you are in KL and you've got a bit of time or like the best part of a morning or an afternoon, I think you're in for a treat, not least because entry to this is free unless you want to go into the temples and then you are expected to pay a small donation. And so with that, then yeah, this is still worth it if only for the staircase alone. I do still think it's worth it. Yeah, let's not mistake that. <laughs> I think we're gonna turn and head home for a bit. Yeah, I'd say onwards and upwards, but it's actually onwards and back downwards. Yeah. We had every intention of going out to a night market in the city, but unfortunately, not shortly after we came home, then Rachel's health took a bit of a turn for the worse, and so she's been trying very hard to rest up and sleep it all off. A little bit disappointing, would've been nice, but we're in this part of the world for a while, so I'm sure that there's gonna be plenty of opportunities, one, to have Malaysian food, but also to, to experience many more night markets after this. So we've just been cuddled up, watching some Netflix, been watching some Breakpoint, been also catching up on the Depp vs. Herd documentary as well, which is really interesting. And now we're gonna settle in for some true trash TV and watch Too Hot to Handle. 
and hopefully with any luck then we'll both feel a significant amount better to then move on to our next part of this already awesome country. But until the next time, take care and keep smiling.